because of the esoteric nature of the murals and of the temple itself, which we see in a sense before us here as this great mandala, even to experience the murals in their original context, you had to go across the waters in a small yakskin coracle to get across to a little island in a lake behind the Dalai Lama's Potala Palace in Lhasa. And you would go up through ascending levels of floors within the temple. And only at the topmost floor that you could reach through a trap door onto an enclosing balcony, you would enter into a room, one half of which were surrounded by murals. And the other half was a practice space where the Dalai Lama both could meditate and practice these esoteric yogas. And in that sense, what we see before us on the top floor is that recreation in this model of that kind of space. And so this was an architecture, if you will, not just representing a practical space of seclusion and sanctuary for the Dalai Lamas, but it was also very much a symbolic architectural space, representing the ascending levels from matter to spirit to light, which was literally what the murals are showing. It was also a centering device. So what we see here in this mandala form is a kind of microcosm of the universe itself. One of the wonderful things about the Lukang Temple is the different ways it can be related to by different people. And it's something we also try to reflect in the exhibition itself. So when we talk about these outer inner secret levels, what we see here is a very graphic representation of how this is reflected within the architecture of the Lukang Temple itself. So on the ground floor is where you'll still see many, many pilgrims uh, coming today to make offerings to these uh, serpent spirits because particularly as farmers in Tibet, it's very important that they have a, a very harmonious relationship with the cycles of nature. And so they'll actually bring sometimes small pieces of land, of earth, uh, from, from their farms and they will make offerings on it and they'll put it in the water, let it circulate around the temple, but they also come directly into the lower floor to make offerings to these anthropomorphic representations of these, these energies, if it were, of the deepest psyche. This next level, reached through a set of stairs that come here, is a level that's showing a Tibetan opera that's based upon a kind of heroic journey into the world of the Nagas in order to reveal what was called the wish-fulfilling jewel. So here we have, you know, first this very kind of primary animistic level, the second level is a kind of mythopoetic um, drama about the journey, as it were, into the unconscious mind to bring up the treasure of knowledge in the form of a wish-fulfilling jewel. And then only when we go up to the stairs on the back side, come onto the surrounding balcony, and we enter into what was the private meditation chamber uh, for the sixth Dalai Lama around 1700, do we come into the set of murals, which is introducing a whole nother level of experience. And these were basically techniques forms of meditation and yoga in order to enter into the autonomous nervous system, the things that actually were, are happening by themselves, but to bring conscious awareness into the depth of the psyche. And through that, to bring about a transformed experience of, of nature and reality itself. And at the heart of that room was a thousand arm image of the Bodhisattva of universal compassion, because it's at the heart of this tradition is that if you start practicing these tantric yogas without the motivation and orientation of compassion and undertaking it for the benefit of all beings, then it can lead to certain forms of psychic inflation, um, psychological disorientation, and not helpful. It's also interesting when we look at the architectural design, when we see this kind of protuberance on the top floor and this set of uh, windows on this side, this is facing south. So although we have the murals over here on three walls, it was this section on the top floor of the Lukang Temple that was actually the meditation chamber for the Dalai Lamas. And there's still the original firebox. It was the, the meditation box that was used by the Dalai Lamas in order to generate the inner heat, to generate the kind of clear light experiences that were, <clears throat> in a sense, induced through the practice of these physical yogas. And in front of that was an entire space where he could actually engage in the physical yogas that we'll see are illustrated on the walls of the temple. And particularly uh, when we get to the visionary uh, forms of yoga that are also represented in the murals, the light coming in through this lattice work is reflected, you know, even what we see uh, depicted in the murals as this kind of visionary uh, displays on a lattice work which is induced through these practices. <laughs> 